Blog Talk Radio. You are now tuned into the best fatherhood radio show in the world. Furthering Fathering Radio Show. Furthering Fathering Radio Show. With your host, Pastor Jeremy Maynard. You know his motto. He's excited to be alive. The, the, the Furthering Fathering Radio Show star in five, four, three, two, one. You ready? Let, let, let's get the conversation started. Matthew 7, verses 7, 8, and then 2 Timothy 2, 15 and 16. And Matthew 7, 7 and 8 reads as follows. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, Receiveth, he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Second Timothy 2.15 and 2.16 reads, Study to show thyself approved unto Yah, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun Profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Hallelujah. Call of fathers to be literate. Hallelujah. To be literal fathers. Dads who not only partake of word, but share and dole it out to their offspring, to their progeny. Thank you, Lord, that you thought it so important that you put your words in books. So bless us, Lord, as we pick up books to learn and grow. The power of research is development. You not only inquire and and, and receive what you are seeking, But through the process, you develop diligence. You sharpen your curiosity into pursuit. So bless us, Lord, as we pursue the truth. And the truth makes us free. That pursuit of truth is the doorway, the hallway, the corridor to freedom. So bless us, Lord, as we walk that walk and talk that talk and read that word to our and with our children. We thank you in the master's name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. You know, Elder Ron, amen. you know, there's, there's, there's yes, honor sir. in the hunt. 
you know this you know uh, 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 there's honor in the hunt, especially mm-hmm. when you're hunting for wisdom and meaning. You know when 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 we go out and seek, and it's not handed to you, you have a sense of accomplishment. Not even in the application of what you got, but just ah, I got it. That's what you know. When people find gold, like Eureka, <laughs> or when they get that diamond, yes, ah, yes, yes. yes, celebration in merely finding. So the power of research. Uh, uh, is is the manifestation of curiosity. Yes, so uh, uh, we are blessed with curiosity to ask poignant questions, then with the impetus to pursue the possible answers. So when we do that, it sharpens us in many, many ways. Um, And when we're no longer spoon-fed, they're, you know, especially our children, you know there's that period of time when they make a mess, but you still have to let them try yeah. and do on their own because eventually they'll be able to respond to their own hunger, the hunger to know. And they will not mm-hmm. merely rely on singular sources, but they will seek the source and other resources for their research. So we're going to talk about dads discussing and helping their children to develop the answering of their own curiosity uh, with quality research. So, mm-hmm. so um, you notice the word research. That means you searched already, <laughs> and now you got to go mm. deeper because you didn't get it completely the first time. You got the bare minimum. You got the the, the face of it, the skin of it. But you want to get past the meat of it, past the bone of it, past the soul of it, to the spirit of it. (laughs) You know, it's between knowing the law, knowing the the, the law and knowing the spirit of the law. That's Mm -hmm. when the judgment becomes wise. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> you you are on point on that. And thinking of, when you think about that, um, when you initially look at something, you don't see the internal uh, 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 skeleton. You don't see the interactions of what you're looking at. You're seeing yeah. what's left there in front of you. But when you go back and you start to intentionally Focus on what you or looked at the first time. You notice you may miss something. Yeah. Or you notice something is, is 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 sounding a little bit different than what you originally saw the first time and spoke out what you saw. Because yeah. there's certain ways. Sometimes it'll be in the way a word is written or the way a sentence is lined up. It may seem like it sounds like this, but with with, with closer uh, investigation and more intentionality, you begin to notice the way certain words are being used. And as yeah. we know, in one area specifically, in the area of law, you have what's mm-hmm. called law, I mean, you have what's called legal, and what's called legalese. Most people exactly. think the word legalese is the extension of the word law, but no, it's not. It means two totally different things. Yeah. Now, the layman will know that, but the average person doesn't have a clue and what I just said right there would go completely over their head because they're like, huh? I've never heard of that before. Of course not. You've never taken the time to go into that and study it in any shape, form, or manner to find out. And why didn't you? Because it didn't seem important to you because it wasn't anything that has ever been come across your path and such a presented to you in such a manner that it would make you curious to want to know. Yep. So you go off the yep. basis of it. And what's ironic is, some of the same words that are in your regular dictionary that we use in our regular everyday speaking, writing, communicating, but when you look in a specific type of dictionary, the one thing that I'll call it, either you can call, talk about the Black's Law Dictionary or you can talk about the Belvedere uh, Law mm-hmm. Dictionary. But when you look at those same words in your basic dictionary, Webster uh, and some of the others, and then you look at the same word in the Law Dictionary, they mean something totally different. 
Exactly. Because in the court, yeah, the word you understand done, means something completely really different. When, when, when you think of the word Absolutely. understanding, you understanding in in legalese is different than understanding in, in uh, a classroom. Uh, it's exactly. a completely different connotation. Understanding means you abide in it. When you have an understanding, that means you have an agreement. <laughs> it's different than than yeah. when you mm-hmm. have an understanding of uh, uh, um, uh, in a cl- understanding a topic uh, in a classroom. Mm-hmm. They're two different things, and it's good to yeah, know the various mm-hmm. meanings and where and what is implied by the context. And research gets you to go past the the the, the, the popular understanding, the typical understanding, down to the etymology, which means the study of the actual word, and the yes. context. Because sometimes words are used, and, and, and I'm uh, happy to shout out the best uh, spoken word artist in the world, K.O. Car- uh, across the K.O. Charles, uh, that sometimes the words are meant to be symbolic, figurative, Sometimes the word are poetic. Sometimes mm-hmm. they inferences, they infer things, they, they, and do not speak directly. Sometimes the yep. words themselves are like head nods or, or winks. The very words themselves are made up of symbols in the in the simple English or Aramaic or, or the alphabet that we get. Um, it, 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 ha- it doesn't have the same connotation as if you learn the alphabet. The alphabet, each letter has a meaning. So when you're reading a word, mm-hmm. you're reading a sentence. And when you're reading a sentence, you're reading a paragraph. <laughs> so yep. this research causes you to look into things deeper. The first search is the first sight, which you really see, which you see on the surface. But research mm-hmm. Is when you go in deeper, and you want to teach your kids to do research, uh, to go beyond what has just just been said, to understand the deeper meaning and the ramifications of things they've been taught. And to, man, the time is flying. We've already got to come to our first commercial, and I'm looking for yep. it, and I don't see it. Oh, here we go, because we got our breakfast coming up on this Saturday. Here we go. Calling all men of Clayton County, Georgia, and Nassau County, New York. Please join us for our men's breakfast on September 16, 2023, at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at 351 Valley Hill Road, Northeast, Riverdale, Georgia, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at 1272 Langdon Boulevard, Rockville Center, New York. That's 9 a.m in Georgia and 10 a.m. in New York. Men from the community will be honored. Food will be served. There will be a time of networking, a time of fellowship, a healthy-wide discussion and connections made in a safe, judgment-free environment. Please, come one, come all. Enjoy yourself. Contact us at 888-380- 3370. Register at www.furtheringfathering.org. Email us at info furtheringfathering.org. Yes, yes, yes. Join us in Furthering Fathering as we go through that and take the child back to school on Saturday or Friday. This Friday at the old elementary school. Roosevelt. Contact us for more information or even call the Centennial Elementary School for information. But contact us at 888-380-3370 or email us at info at furtheringfathering.org. Yes, the brothers are back in the building and we are now listening to the best fatherhood radio show in the world. You are now tuned into the best fatherhood radio show in the world. Furthering Fathering Radio Show. Radio Show. Radio Show. Radio 
Yes, the brothers are back in the building. Developing a legacy of literacy. Reading to and with your kids to develop research skills. You know, Elder Ron, you know the number seven is the number of perfection or the number of maturity or completion. And uh, Mm -hmm. I was able to ascertain about seven long-lasting benefits of research and why a dad should teach their child how to research well. The very first one is critical thinking. And I know etymology, and the core of critical is critic in this case, but no, the core is critique, not critical. You see, the brainwashing of current thinking has you looking for the negative instead of the nugget. Thinking, it's critique of thinking. In other words, you're to critique and assess both the positive and negative aspects of a thing so that you can delineate which is the best and most feasible and proper usage of the truth that is uncovered. Research skills requires critical thinking. When a dad teaches the child how to research, they foster their ability to think and delineate light from dark, true from false, safe from dangerous. Break it down till it's easier. They're able to analyze information and make informed, wise judgments and decisions. This skill is not only crucial in academics, but in the problem solving that will come throughout life. And everyday life will be blessed by the by the research skills that cause you to critique and think. <laughs> Number two, academic success. Now, academic success should be put in its proper perspective because some shine early and bright and meet their max early, but some develop like a fuse (laughs) and blow up later. So academic success comes through, through the proper research skill. Effective research is the fundamental component of academic success. A child who knows how to research can find reliable sources, vital, that's important because not every source is good. They're able to gather information in a qualitative way and create well-informed essays, reports, diagrams, projects, models, whatever it need be. It can lead to higher grades and a deeper understanding, which is more important than the higher grade. There's a deeper understanding of, so that it can be applied to the subjects that are being taught. Number three, independence. Better than independence, I would rather say quality interdependence. They learn how to relate because they learn how to function taking uh, control of what they can take control of and contribute. Effective research is teaching children how that empowers them to be uh, uh, curious, self-motivated learners. They won't rely solely on teachers and textbooks for information. Instead, they will seek out knowledge on their own, or they'll learn to ask questions and to whom they should ask those questions, fostering a lifelong love because their curiosity is validated, a lifelong love of learning. Next, information literacy. In this digital age, the ability to discern credible sources from unreliable sources is vital. Teaching research skills equips children 
and adults who are learning later, information literacy, helping them to identify bias. Bias is not always wrong. It's a bias. It's true. <laughs> Evaluate resources and avoid falling for misinformation or fake news. Next is problem solving. Research often involves in that quest. You know, quest is the is the uh, prefix of question. When you're asking a question, you are on a quest. You are searching for something. You are traveling mentally. You're traveling down your own through your own through the vehicle of your own curiosity, own diligence toward the truth of something. As you problem solve, whether it's the solution to a math problem or understanding complex issues, these skills are transferable to various aspects of life. When you learn to put things in order and you capture patterns that will bless you not only in whatever you're learning in that moment, but it will bless you in other because you understand the power of sequence and the power of process. And it will bless your patience and your decision making to not jump too far in advance and not wait too long. Communication is the next one. Research goes hand in hand with effective communication. Sometimes in the heat of foolishness, we blurt out what emotions tell us to blurt out. But we're admonished to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the right the, the righteousness of the Most High, which is James 1, verse 20, 19 and 20. Career preparation. Research is a fundamental skill in many careers. When and if a child should decide to become a scientist, a journalist, a lawyer, a business person, a pastor, <laughs> a civil leader, a, 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 someone who is part of the public discourse, the ability to gather and analyze information is invaluable. Teaching research skills can provide a strong foundation, a strong foundation for the future educational professional, and family success. You not only need to research information, you need to research people. <laughs> mm. By asking quality okay. questions to get to their heart. Part of the power of research is not merely the quest, but the quality of the quest, which comes from the quality of the question. So teach your children to not merely ask questions and don't push them away when they ask questions because you're embarrassed that they ask a question that you don't know the answer to. That leads to a separation where there could be a closeness as you learn together. Say, I don't know that. Hey, grab, grab your phone and let's go to Google and find out together. Validate the child's inquisitiveness. Because the curiosity comes from the desire to be mature and to know more. So part the, the main goal of parenting is maturity. And a part of maturity is research. So, Elder Ron, I know I said a lot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, I'm just listening, brother, because you're dropping jewels, man. In conclusion to, to all of that, you know, that your, your investment in teaching them how to research causes them to, to grow intellectually, but it also yes, it causes does. them to grow spiritually because at the core of the power of words is spiritual authority. Ah, you, you think it's just a matter of... Uh, uh, of being able to get ahead in, in life, this life. Every bit of information 
uh, that you receive is stored in your mind, which is part of your soul. It is the first, is the consigliere of your will. Your mind is the consigliere of your will. You thought that your mind being powerful was the most important thing. No, the most important thing to be powerful is your will. Your soul is made up of three major compartments. Your soul is made up of your will, your mind, and your emotions. Your, your will is in charge. You think your mind is in charge because that's what they teach you. No, your mind is not in charge. Your will is. Which why Your will is where your character is and what makes the decisions. And in any organization, including your soul, whoever makes the decisions is in charge. So you have to have willpower, but you have to have a well-informed will to make good decisions. Your, your mind is the library and the librarian and the, and the consigliere, the one who gives advice. But your will must be informed for you to make quality choices and decisions because that will determine the trajectory of child's life and of your life and of your legacy and their legacy and the, in perpetuity, the inheritance and the heritage of your people, your family, your family name, the goodness of the reputation will become in the quality of, of your doing. The quality of your doing comes from the quality of your learning. Your mastery comes as you learn to do what you learn. <laughs> yep. That's very true. Oh my god. You all the points. Hey, the you hitting already. all the points. <laughs> I might have to let you talk this next this next after this next break. <laughs> <laughs> Love you to life, Dr. Ryan. Here we go. Here's the, here's the, we're in the next break. We'll talk to you after these. Okay. Calling all men of Clayton County, Georgia, and Nassau County, New York. Please join us for our men's breakfast on September 15, 2023, at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at 351 Valley Hill Road, Northeast, Riverdale, Georgia, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at 12. 72 Langdon Boulevard, Rockwell Center, New York. That's 9 a.m. in Georgia and 10 a.m. in New York. Men from the community will be honored. Food will be served. There will be a time of networking, a time of fellowship, a healthy wide discussion and connections made in a safe, judgment-free environment. Please, come one, come all. Enjoy yourself. Contact us at 888-380-3370. Register at www.furtheringfathering.org. Email us at info furtheringfathering.org. Yes, yes, yes. We at Furthering Fathering will be part of the Dad Taking Child to School Back. Back to school day on this Friday. September 15th. Join us at the Senior Elementary School as we welcome the dad and the kids back to school. And then, Literacy Legacy. We'll be doing that on September 20th, Senior Elementary School, as Literacy Legacy will be forming book clubs. We'll be doing skillful writing and journaling and uh, connecting and researching our individual family's history, asking questions, interviewing family members, all sorts of things will be going on at Literacy Legacy, where we we not focus on the literacy that's in books, but the literacy that's in technology, as we also discover technical literacy. There'll be literacy, uh, uh, and cultural literacy, amongst many, 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 of many more. So join us. Reach out to us. 888. 888- 380-3370. I gave the pregnant pause so you can write it down. 888-380-3370 or call us at info at furtheringfathering.org. Yes, developing a legacy of literacy. 
reading to and with your kids to develop research skills. And I lost Elder Ron. So, but, but no matter what we're doing, you are listening to the best fatherhood radio show in the world. You are now tuned into the be- be- best fatherhood radio show in the world. F- F- furthering, furthering Fathering Radio Show. Radio show. Yes, yes, yes. The brothers are back in the building. I think that's Elder Ron back. Is that you? Is that yeah. you? Yeah, it's me. It's me. <laughs> yeah. It is that. All right, all right, all right. Yes, yes. We are we are excited to be alive. Um, we, we're excited about the future of the dads and the children. And before we get into seven, another list of seven that I that I have uh, uh, of of uh, importance, the importance of quality research and the seven benefits of quality research. Um, that, that's for the dad. Um, I know you have you're you're, you're we're like hearted in this, um, not merely like minded, but like hearted in this manner that we are pursuers of truth, we, uh, eternal students. <laughs> Um, yep. Can you talk you can about say, your, your, your you love that, of yeah. research? Can you, Ron, can you talk about your love of research? Oh, Ooh. Ooh. You might be here all night, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, we got to you know, first of all, it's, 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 a, it's a hunger that develops. Some of you, you already have it as a child. That's why you're so inquisitive as as a child because it's in your it's it's you're part of what makes your imagination. Mm. That's why a child can actually and make up a whole play session all by themselves mm-hmm. with nobody else. And if you watch that child long enough, that child has created four or five other characters. They mm-hmm. all have their own identity. They already set the stage. They already got the play in place. Yep. They already know how to direct and produce. Yep. And then they put they they say, you know, ready on the set, go. <laughs> and that yep. child plays it out, and you sit there and watch that child all by themselves playing yep. every part, not missing a beat. And you sitting there, most parents are cracking up. But what else are you seeing when your Amen. child is doing that? That is key. They are finding out who they are. Yep. They are finding out what they are. And they are expressing what they believe they are. Do Amen. those 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 are rumors. If you look at something that we use in, in, in uh foster and family leaders, the course that we teach here in Georgia for uh, for the United Way folks, um, that's been so so awesome and so consistent for the last I think it's been We've done it for almost, I think it's five years now, five or four, even five years. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm correctable on that, but I know it's one of the two. I'm just not sure at the moment. But I know it's at least one of the two because I've been myself and Frank have been the one teaching it <laughs> all these years. But those, they have what's called a protective factor. And there's five levels of protective factor. One is parental resiliousness. Two is social connections. Three is knowledge of parenting and child development. Four is concrete support in times of need. Five is social and emotional compliance of children. Now, those are five impacting very powerful arenas to help develop a relationship with your children um, and, and with those in the community concerning your children. But one key thing that stands out is that parental resilience, the ability to adapt to the things and use your skill level as a parent to make things operate in a very, very, very positive manner for you and your children. And third one, knowledge of parenting and child development is big because that one in itself begins to explain to the child and help them to be in agreement that starting from the age of birth, there are certain um, attributes that begin to develop in a child naturally, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, or whether it's mental. And as a parent, knowing how to recognize when those things are coming into place and how they are flowing, great asset for a parent as their child grows up to help guide them, help structure, 
help provide, apply the, uh, 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 supply the platform and the foundation for them so they're comfortable in their growing, helping them to, create, to, to develop a, ser- a solid character. And that solid character in itself reflects itself in a consistent behavior. Now, and if you do, you're not doing it, it opens up the door to a poor character which seeks behind, to hide behind deceptive words and actions. So when you are allowing your child spending time with them and the things they enjoy, especially when it's discovery time, and showing them how to not just look at something from the surface, but to go deep and beyond. Example, as a young boy, not only was I hungry for books, and knowledge. But I was hungry to see how they lined up. I was hungry to see what I was seeing and reading, how it actually applied in real life. So to complement the reading of books, you know what I started doing, Jay? What did you just start doing, Ron? I started going to places like the museums. Mm. I started going to places like the zoos, the aquarium. Yeah, planetarium. I started going to places like that because then the things I saw in writing, I could put a reality to it when I saw it in action or saw the demonstration of it, and I could pair the two together. So all the research I was doing in the books, now when I saw the actual thing itself, I had a foreknowledge of what to expect when I was looking. So if I saw something that didn't line up and made me curious enough to go, well, that's not what I read about that. So what did that do? It caused me to go back home and do further research to see if there was something I missed. So that helps in tennis, but we don't see enough of that because most of our youth today do most of everything they do, a.k.a. through technology, through the Internet. But what's great about the Internet in this time and age is that if you can't visit the museum physically, you can visit it online. Yeah. And most museums and most universities and others, when they have subjects, they have in-depth stuff with it that you can go even deeper into getting the understanding of whatever it is that you're seeking. So when you're, you're helping your children to learn how to do research, you're helping them to be better scholars. And, and to become more confident in their ability to get understanding of things because they don't give up the moment they hit a roadblock. They know they can go further because they have the skill set to do so. They have the ability and they have the, the support and the help base that help them to get to the bottom of what they're seeking. So that is a part of parental resilience in doing that, going above and beyond what most people would do. That's where the the knowledge of parenting and child development, you begin to reach that child at whatever age bracket they're at on the level that they can understand. So it's not intimidating to them, nor is it boring them because you make it in such that you make them excited to want to do it. You make it seem like it's worth its while in doing what they're doing. You help them to, to understand that in the sense of not using the word discipline, because some words you use will create such a reaction from your children, they may shut down. But, you know, when right. you hear that, tell you that word discipline, you know they relate that to. And they shut down on you. But when you use it and you understand to what we said earlier about the proper use of words, you know, etymology, having a child to understand that discipline also means this. Yes. So when they hear it, they don't shut down. Exactly. They, they go, oh, I need to understand the discipline of this so I can have a greater understanding of it. It's part of those those uh, uh, three Ds of self-discovery. Discover, develop, and then deliver. So when your children are able to discover, then they're able to develop what they discover, and then they are confident in their ability to deliver that thing mm. that they have discovered and develop yes. and got better at them, or have gotten the confidence to feel that they're adequate enough in their thinking and, and in their ability to display what it is they know so that they can project it. And that comes from what? Them learning how to research. Yes. 
them learning to understand that when they do the, that, the hunt, there's honor in the hunt because there's yeah. recognition when you hunt and you capture whatever it is you're hunting. Now yeah. you're looking for the Usa moment because of all the work you put in and you've accomplished your ultimate goal. Now you're like, okay, give me some not recognition of pride, but give me some understanding that I, I did accomplish what I was seeking to do. And once they see that, it continues to feed that hunger for more of the same. So it plays over into every part of their life. Right. Yeah, so it, it's very important. So the research is very important. And I learned that. And, and it didn't get less as I got older. It increased. Yes. Yeah. What does yeah. it do when you do that? Another part of that, it helps, this, it helps you to learn how to practice strategies of effective communication as well. Exactly. 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 And at the end, of the day, that's the most important. About, people care about, especially when you, when you, you, not only what you know what you're talking about, but see, when you study enough, you understand what exactly. is. And that informs the community and conversation. You know what part of it? Is it develops a, a, a humility in you, too, and an yes. accountability. Yes. Because you understand that me having to run my mouth all the time is not the answer to the situation. That's why I have two ears and one mouth. Even though my mouth may be two separate lips combined together to make one thing, but my ears are two, but they're on one, both sides of my head for a reason. So I should be doing more with them than I'm doing with this. Yes, yes, yes. Powerful, powerful statements. And you know what time it is? With that being said, it's time for us to go to a break. And after these messages, we'll be right back. Calling all men of Clayton County, Georgia, and Nassau County, New York. Please join us for our men's breakfast on September 16, 2023, at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at 351 Valley Hill Road, Northeast. Riverdale, Georgia, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at 1272 Langdon Boulevard, Rockville Center, New York. That's 9 a.m. in Georgia and 10 a.m. in New York. Men from the community will be honored. Food will be served. There will be a time of networking, a time of fellowship, a healthy wide discussion and connections made in a safe, judgment-free Please, come one, come all. Enjoy yourself. Contact us at 888-380-3370. Register at www.furtheringfathering.org. Email us at info at Yes, yes, yes. Good to be Further and Fathering provides, as you say, an opportunity for multi-generational literacy as a legacy. It provides dads and the students the guidance for the development of leadership skills, team building, literacy, creative writing, public speaking, and communication amongst the generations. Join us as we do so, kicking it off. September 20th at Centennial Elementary School in Roosevelt. You know what? You know, Ron, we are listening to the best fatherhood radio show in the world. You are now tuned into the best fatherhood radio show in the world. Furthering Fathering Radio Show. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, developing a, leg- a legacy of literacy. Reading to and with your kids to develop research skills. You know, Ron, they're, 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 you know, I love the number seven. I also love the number nine. Number nine is the number of truth. <laughs> mm-hmm. number, there's seven, yes, seven core ways that, you know, that, that are benefits, uh, that research benefits us. And as I think of those seven ways that, 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 benefit us through quality research, 
you know, it, 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 I see the importance of our imagination. You see, our imagination is the most godly. Our imagination is the most godly part of us because we're made mm-hmm. in the image of Elohim, who is our creator. We're the Selem, S-E-L-E-M, of Elohim, or we're the Imago Dei, uh, if you want to do the Latin, Imago Dei, D-E-I, uh, of the Most High. And because of this, when we actually search beyond sight, we're told to walk by faith and not by sight. So you, when you believe that you will receive the truth or, or walk in the direction of the truth, you walk led by the Spirit and become more confident. So here's seven benefits to quality research. Accurate and informed decision-making. High-quality research provides reliable Information and evidence, because you want to know why? It's the truth, and the truth is the doorway to freedom. It makes us free. It is the manufacturing yep. plant of freedom, which enables us and organizations to make well-informed decisions. Whether it's a business, choosing a marketing strategy, or an individual making a personal decision, research helps to minimize the guesswork and the uncertainty. What truth does is makes you sure. And when you are sure, you are now confiding with the source of truth. And that's mm-hmm. fidelity. Con with fide, faith. So you become con- confident as you have accurate and informed uh, uh, regarding information informing your decision making number two for the individual just like with the children is problem solving research is an essential tool for solving complex problems it allows you to identify root causes if you want to know why people are acting up it's not just the brain chemistry you have to take things to their exception to come yep. to a logical conclusion so that you can make an informed decision. You have to take things from their spiritual inception to come to the logical conclusion. So what it heightens is discernment. Discernment is the guide through the difficulty. Like you have a Sherpa that takes you up into the mountains in areas you didn't know. Well, well, well this is the, the quality research becomes uh, your Sherpa to, to take you to, to your inclination, your climbing up. Yeah. And research causes you to find root causes and issues. Explore the potential solutions because there may be more than one. And evaluate the effectiveness of each one pro, uh, pro- provided. It is an approach that, that is valuable in every research or uh, every field of studies, whether it be medicine or engineering. You need to be good at problem solving. So you, if you want to be good at problem solving, you have to be good at researching. Don't be satisfied with just what the textbook says. You have to go out and observe it. And you observe. Well, that's a whole other thing. Ob meaning the eyes or the vision. Things become obvious mm-hmm. and serve. Around you, you serve and it serves you. So to even discern, you have to observe. Yeah. Next, you know, innovation and creativity. Innovation and creativity, research laws leads to new ideas. Maybe if we tried this, see that maybe may lead you to driving a Maybach. Let me stop. That maybe, <laughs> that maybe may lead you to, well, well, you are putting in a request to your curiosity. And the curiosity mm-hmm. is sending out an order for 
with your diligence to pursue it. It leads to innovation by encouraging individuals to explore uncharted territory. It gets you comfortable in uncomfortable areas because you want to learn and grow there. And it causes to experiment new approaches and challenge existing norms. Also, also we, we want to talk about advancement. Yes, we like to talk about academic advancement. Advancement in your purpose. The more scholarly you are in your service, the better you are at facilitating your purpose. Researchers combine to expansion of knowledge within their respective fields, and, and their findings are disseminated, sometimes through peer review. Mm-hmm. You can send it through a text. <laughs> you, can, you can send a URL <laughs> nowadays. Uh, 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 um, it's an increase in expansion and the advancement of purpose. Next is economic growth. Guess what happens when you're the first to discover something that benefits a whole bunch of others? And you learn how to maneuver and make it work, uh, not only in actual practicality, but also so that it can be pushed out to the masses. You start to, 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 to grow economically. And others, because you're making things efficient for them, they start to grow economically. When you do something that causes someone else to grow economically, you, you get blessed behind it. And your research yeah. is valuable to others. Next. Uh, policy and practice. Policymakers and practitioners in various fields such as healthcare and education rely on research and strategies and interventions so that That's right. quality research informs design and the implementation of policies and practices so that you have better societal outcomes. And finally, personal empowerment on an individual level, but it's also on a group level because one can take a thousand and two can send ten thousand into flight. It's why you have groups. It's not one individual that designs a rocket ship or a plane or what have you. You have groups designing things that make things better. So it's not merely personal empowerment, but it's group empowerment. And, uh, and the engaging in research uh, of quality empower people to understand complex topics, make informed choices, and advocate for their interests because they know what is betterment and what is empowerment. And it fosters critiques within critical thinking that encourages lifelong learning. So what? So so what's up, Ron? Uh, you think we? Uh, you think? Dads are ready to to, to uh, uh, teach their children how to research. Uh, I think you should. I, let me give you an example of what happens when you raise. Well, I don't even want to use the word raise. How do I use that word? But when you help bring your child up in the knowledge of what they should be brought up in as a parent, and others that assist you. Let me give you an example. His name is Doctor Thomas. And I don't want to chop up his name, but it's spelled, his last name is spelled M-E-N-S-A-H. M-E-N-S-A-H. So it's man, I don't know if it's Mensa. man, Paul. Mensa. 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 Okay. Yeah. I know I was close. But yeah. he's known as the man who changed the world of technology. Now, how many people know of this gentleman? And two, I just said his name. People say, huh? Who's that? As soon as you hear technology, what names do you associate with? Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, um, what's our uh, guy over there, uh, Musk, and, 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 you know, some others. Um, they all are, lo- lo- uh, are associated with technology. But so this is a man that says change the world with technology. Wait, we never heard of him. Well, how did he do it? First, he was an inventor. Hmm. And then he was a chemical engineer. He had PhDs in several fields. And he became well-known in his field. So that says something. He became well-known in his field. Who was he well-known to? To his peers and others. 
And it says that he contributed both. Wait a minute, no, hold up. Well, I said both, that means more than one. He contributed both fiber optics and neon theology, t- technology to the world. And because of what he did, he was inducted into the National Academy of Investors as a fellow. And I'll let you explain that to those who don't know what that means, but it's an extinguished position. And has 14 patents that he himself put together. The man was born in Ghana. Now, his daddy was a cocoa merchant. Now, you try to figure out how the two of those go together. How did cocoa merchant go together with fiber optics and neon technology? So what did the father do that spurred this young man to become what he became? What was the platform, the foundation that gave him the hunger and the desire to seek to do what he did, that he did in such excellence that he impacted the whole world, to your statement earlier, or some of the things you do will impact others. His impacted the world and how we live today. But yet, if you call his name, those outside of his skill set or some learned areas in private universities, you may know of him, but outside of that, how many know? How many times have you seen this man spoke of in black history? Oh, by the way, I didn't say that, did I? My bad. Oh, yeah, he's a brother. Yes, this is an African-American man. So when you see this, and you see that every day, the majority of things you operate on your job or at home are, are different type of things that have the need of having fiber optics. Uh, neon technology operating in them for them to operate. And what else did he do even as a chemical engineer? Remember I said he has 14 patents. I just don't have the information in front of me of what all 14 patents were. But you can just imagine, let your imagination take you, that they must have been pretty deep for this man to become what they call a fellow. Now, there's a book that um, that he's in called Black Scientists and Inventors. And it's by the author is Michael Williams, and I think it's Gianna Robinson or Joanna Robinson. But this is to show you what happens when you research. When you begin to love the research, it brings something out of you that you probably didn't know that you were born with because everything was in you before you got here. You can't predestined with all that you were to do. All the stuff you're doing, the research, everything is is triggering the spiritual aspect of who you are to speak to what Brother Jeremy said earlier. So, yeah, that's just one example of what happens when you allow yourself to do research. You find out some stuff not only about what you're researching, but you find out some stuff about yourself as well. All right, Jeremy. Can you hear me? Hello. Oh my God! Tonight, where we share our five core principles: honor, encouragement, accountability, and reconciliation with up and coming dads and with Sharing the pods with them at some at some point. It's the further evolving radio show. The, the, the brothers are back in the building. Brother J in NYC and Brother L in the ATL. The, the, the further evolving radio show. 